Um, all right, now we're on six. Please read that into the record. An ordinance and amendment of Chapter 14 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Providence entitled Licensing, adding Article 17, Adult Entertainment Establishment. Okay. And our lead sponsor is Councilman Salvatore, who is with us this evening. Councilman, could you kindly explain to the committee what you hope to accomplish here? We can't hear you, Councilman. I'll find that mute button yet. All right. Yes. We're going to get you one of those mugs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there are multiple. Um, thank you, Chair and members of the committee. Uh, I also want to thank the co-sponsors who joined me in introducing this. Uh, the ordinance before you would uh, do a couple of things. One, it would create a licensing requirement for adult entertainment venues. Uh, as you know, uh, there is an adult entertainment license in the city of Providence, but it falls under the overarching um, entertainment license. So there are cities across the country who have adopted similar ordinances around this issue. Uh, I, I just want to take a few minutes and, and describe what it is that I'm intending to do. Uh, you know, like many of you, when, when we're engaging our constituents, oftentimes it's, uh, it's on the campaign trail, uh, it's in the neighborhood, we're getting to know our constituents on, on a human level. And during my time on the council, I can say that uh, I've spoken with constituents who have brought to my attention their concerns and some ongoing issues um, that they've experienced um, relative to sexual violence that takes place in the adult entertainment industry. And what I've learned through speaking with, with folks in, in Providence and uh, and in the industry is that a lot of times women are pressured. Uh, they're pressured to perform sexual acts by club owners and managers and staff without the protections, the legal protections that, that they should have uh, under which, you know, quite frankly, the, the, the living that, that they're making. And, you know, when, when women are complaining to club owners and management there are a lot of times met with contempt and dismissed by these owners. Uh, so the organization and con conditions of, of the adult entertainment venues that I'm speaking of uh, sometimes produce and reproduce gender inequality. And I know we've talked a lot about equality as a body, which I'm very proud of. Uh, but in this industry, it's, it's almost facilitated as, as a, normal, a normal thing where you know, violence against women by men is, is accepted and legalized by, by the industry itself. So you know, a lot of adult entertainment employees, they're, they're not paid a wage. They're considered um, independent contractors. So a lot of times they have to, and I, and I read this in, in the literature and research, they have to pay these club owners to work inside of these buildings. Um, and, you know, it's quite frankly disturbing that, you know, this is happening not only here in Providence, but across the country where women feel like they can't go to their bosses, they can't go to these building owners and, and, and club owners to complain while turning over at times 50% of their income to, to make a living to these club owners. So, what I'm attempting to do with this license, is, uh, this ordinance is one, create a licensing process and two, allow the licensing department uh, or the licensing board to regulate what is happening within these buildings. And uh, the proposal before you would uh, remove the private areas, okay? Those isolated areas where a lot of this uh, sexual assault and violence could be happening and hold these club owners accountable for, um, for these acts of violence that, that are happening in these VIP areas or these isolated areas in the building. And you might be asking, why is this man you know, asking for a regulation around what women are, are doing and how they're making a living? I think we have a moral responsibility chair to, to address this issue. And this is one proposal that we could consider um, but I have heard from, from employees in the industry, I've heard from club owners over the last couple of months, 
And I want to learn a little more from them and what their creative solutions are to mitigate um, the, the, the violence and the sexual assault that, that I have been hearing about for quite some time. I don't want to relive the past, but we've had continuous issues in certain parts of the city where these establishments are located. And we expend quite a bit of public safety resources trying to mitigate this moving forward. I think, again, we have a moral responsibility to our constituents who work in these venues to create these safe environments for them to earn a living while not disrupting the the day-to-day business of these owners. But I do think they need to be held, uh, the owners need to be held accountable. Uh, And one way of doing that is creating a licensing process uh, and then and then regulating it through the Board of Licenses. Thank you. I haven't taken any questions, Chair. Thank you, thank you. Any committee members, any questions for the sponsor? Any committee members, council members? By the way, let the record reflect. I see Councilman Goncalves has joined us. Okay. No questions from committee members? I see we have uh, the uh, licensing administrator, Heather Kilkenny. Um, Ms. Kilkenny, would you be willing to speak on this topic? Have you reviewed it? What are your thoughts? Um, I'm sure that uh, you're in a position where you would have an opinion on this. Sure. So, hi. Thank you for inviting me. Um, you know, I, I, I think it's great to proactively seek out opportunities for the city to um, address sexual violence. Uh, I think from a licensing perspective, I'm just uh, curious about uh, Section 14-400B, the $100 licensing fee. Would that be in lieu of the current fees that we're collecting for monthly entertainment for adult license, which is $10 a day for indoor entertainment? Um, or would this be in addition to that money that we're collected? And then my, my second um, question is about uh, the, the date for renewal and if we'd be willing to consider something where that date would coincide with the liquor license renewals that happened in December, just a month earlier. Um, But uh, I think my other, one other question is about the, um, the, not the posting requirements, but the exterior visibility requirements. Um, I spoke briefly with license enforcement today and just had some concerns about, you know, this adult entertainment activity being uh, visible from from outdoors or the street level. So those are my three main points or concerns with this. Thank you. Councilman Salvatore, do you want to address those uh, points? Uh, in terms of the last, uh, the last point, uh, I can certainly speak with the public safety department and, and find out a creative solution to, to that concern. Uh, in terms of the fee, yes, that is a, a, uh, an additional uh, fee uh, of $100 to, uh, to obtain the license. And the second point was, refresh my memory, sorry, Heather. Yeah, no, no problem. Uh, about the expiration date, I, I just, um, right yeah. now, it, it's, it, it's recommended that it be January 1st. And uh, I'm just thinking that would be something that could coincide with the, the liquor license renewal period, just to no, not I'm, I'm, the workload. Yeah, I'm, I'm open to that suggestion. That's... Okay. Um, <coughs> Mr. Bouchard, oh, I see. Councilwoman Miller has a question. You're muted. You're muted. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And I, I want to thank the sponsor um, for the, the licensing piece of it um, and just share, you know, I, I've heard from um, a lot of folks today <laughs> in the neighborhood on this issue, um, in particularly around the interior visibility question. Um, and I know I'd love an opportunity to um you know, hear from from workers in the industry and just learn a little bit more about ways that we can um, address violence and sexual assault and also do it in a way that that doesn't hurt, you know, does no harm, essentially. So I just wanted to raise that and um, thank you. Very good point. Okay, Mr. Bouchard, do you have any um, 
thoughts, questions, concerns, or where are you with working on this uh, ordinance? Uh, no major thoughts or concerns. I, I do uh, agree with uh, uh, Ms. Kilkenny. I think there's definitely uh, some alteration that we can do to, to address her concerns, and I'm happy to work with the sponsor to make that happen. Okay, great. I think we should continue this on... Oh, the clerk has just advised me. We have a number of letters, um, Councilman Salvatore, that we've received. Um, are they all in opposition? Yes. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, it looks like nine, ten. I have ten letters of opposition, so we all have good, uh, goodly amount of reading to do on um, so I'd like to make take a motion, if I may, to enter these uh, letters of opposition into the record as a package. Um, we'll call this Exhibit A, Madam Clerk. Yes, may I have that motion? motion? Motion made by Vice Chair, seconded by Councilwoman Harris. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, so we have um, these letters as Exhibit A to add to the record. So we have plenty of reading, um, and I'd like to um, ask for a motion, I think, uh, to continue this, to continue the, the work that's being done on that. May I have the motion to continue? By motion to continue. Vice Chair Castillo, seconded Rick. by Councilwoman Harris. All in favor? Aye. Ayes. Uh, any opposed? Ayes have it. Um, item 6 is continued. Thank you very much, Councilman Salvatore. And Pete, please keep Thank us you. informed. I'm sure the committee will review the materials and before them and speak with uh, our director of policy on any questions they might have on as far as the details. There's a lot here um, to digest. So let us know when you're ready to bring it back for discussion. Will do. Thank you. Okay. Um, item 